North Atlantic Alliance reconnaissance aircraft and warships cruising close to Russia's borders have become commonplace. Along with military hardware redeployment and large-scale exercises, NATO has also developed its offensive capability near the Russian borders. Every year, a Russian-backed resolution is submitted to the UN against the glorification of Nazism. The outcome is always the same. The US votes against it, and in recent years with Ukrainian backing. Typically, the EU abstains. But with most countries voting in favor, the document is accepted, but it's only advisory. Peter Kuznick, a writer and history professor at the American University in Washington, summarizes the USA's official position. The United States says that we're not going to prevent f freedom of speech. The United States says that even neo-Nazis have the right to speak and to assemble. A German journalist and filmmaker, Mark Bartelmey, sees the Ukrainian and US positions differently. Das würden die Amerikaner nie, niemals würden die das tun, diese Resolution annehmen. Und die Ukrainer schon gar nicht, weil sie würden damit verurteilen, was sie selbst tun. The modern Western world generally considers Hitler's Nazism to be something atypical of European democracies. The Führer's doctrine on superior and inferior races rather appeared out of thin air in Europe due to an unlucky turn of events. The prerequisites for it had never existed before. But here's the pre-World War map. The UK had colonies in Africa, India, China, the Commonwealth of Australia, Asia, North and South America. France had captured half of Africa and half of Indochina. Belgium possessed Congo. Germany had colonies in Africa, Asia, South America, and Oceania. Italy established colonies in Somalia, Ethiopia, Libya, and Eritrea. There were Spanish colonies in South America and Africa. Portugal occupied colonies several times its own size and population. The USA also kept up with the Europeans. And so, by the early 20th century, most of the world was divided between a few colonial nations. What was going on in the colonies is well known and documented. Millions of ruined lives. Slavery. Ruthless and remorseless exploitation. A former British diplomat, professor of political ideas and author, William Mallinson has studied Europe's colonial system and the reason for its rise and fall. Only one main thing is important for Nazism, internationally speaking, and that is that nations or that states that are allowed to do anything are the master races. And then you have the minor nations who are the slaves. For the Europeans, the slaves were Indians, Africans, for Hitler, they were Jews, Gypsies, and Slavs. Nazism is truly convenient. It's a cynical justification for wiping out so-called inferior races and shamelessly robbing them at the same time. Long before the Third Reich appeared, Nazism had been common in the West. There's only one sane and logical thing to be done with a really inferior race, and that is to exterminate it. H.G. Wells, English author. All these racial ideas and anti-Jewish ideas were circulating everywhere in Europe, and this led or helped to so-called justify the grabbing of other people's resources around the world, including what is today the United States of America. And has it, has anything altered? Only the colors. I do not admit, for instance, that a great wrong has been done to the Red Indians of America, a stronger race. 
a higher grade race, has come in and taken their place. Winston Churchill. The second quote refers to the genocide of Native Americans that continued for around 300 years. About 90% of the continent's indigenous peoples were wiped out. Counter-terrorist expert and former US Army analyst Scott Bennett investigates crimes against humanity. The American Indians were seen as a scourge, as a social pariah that needed to be expunged, expelled, and exterminated from much of uh, the, the eastern seaboard. The elimination of so-called inferior races and extermination camps were typical of the West. Hitler had hardly come up with anything new. Blomfontein, 1901, British concentration camp. Mauthausen, 1945, a Nazi extermination camp. The Western world did fairly well, living off exploiting its colonies. The British Empire was extremely profitable for the British. The French uh, tried to, to copy. In his books and articles, Paul Craig Roberts, professor of economics and well-known journalist and former US Assistant Secretary of the Treasury for Economic Policy, analyzes the economic factors destabilizing the world. I don't uh, think that we can attribute uh, European uh, colonialism uh, to anything other than uh, money-making. <laughs> the sun never set on the British Empire. The colonies were, were everywhere, and this empire is far, far older than, uh, than the Nazis. I like the British people. Their colonial policy was unthinkable. Adolf Hitler. Fascism is always attributed to the Third Reich, without mentioning how other countries contributed to the idea. System des Faschismus, Staatsraison. Der Begriff Faschismus geht auf den italienischen Begriff Facie zurück, was so viel wie Bündel bedeutet. Also die Bündelung von Macht, wirtschaftlicher und politischer. Halb Europa war faschistisch. Franco in Spanien, ein rein faschistisches Regime. Portugal war faschistisch. Rumänien war faschistisch. Ungarn war faschistisch. Frankreich hatte eine faschistische Kollaborateursregierung, die Vichy-Regierung. Deutsche Faschismus während seiner Entstehung sehr stark auch unterstützt worden aus den USA. Finanziert, gefördert hat Hitler oder wurde Hitler vom nationalen und internationalen Kapital. In his books, Anton Lazzo, a history professor, gives a thorough analysis of the reasons that brought Germany to war. Die deutsche Industrie, vor allem die deutsche Rüstungsindustrie, wurde aufgebaut mit Hilfe der amerikanischen Monopole. A lot of elements in Britain and France and the United States were pro-fascist, sympathetic to Hitler and to Mussolini. American business was in bed with the, with the Nazis throughout most of the 30s and into the early 40s. The Standard Oil Company sent crude oil to the Germans on a monthly basis and collaborated with IG Farben. The conglomerate that produced the Zyklon B gas used against people sent into the gas chambers. About half of Wehrmacht vehicles were produced by Opel, which was owned by the American company General Motors before 1940. Ford supplied the German army with motor cars and crude rubber. In July 1938, for his support of Nazi Germany, the American manufacturer, Henry Ford, received the Third Reich's highest possible award for a foreigner, the Order of the German Eagle. 
Hitler sagte 1931 über Ford, ich zitiere Hitler, ich betrachte Henry Ford als meine Inspiration. Und Himmler 1924 schon. Ford ist einer der wertvollsten, wichtigsten und geistreichsten Vorkämpfer. Die NSDAP wurde also stark finanziert, auch aus den USA, unter anderem von der Bank of America, dort namentlich äh, von einem Herrn Bush, dem Urgroßvater von George Bush, auch US-Präsident, alteingesessenen Familien in den USA, die ein Interesse daran hatten, dass Europa und auch die junge Sowjetunion in einen Krieg gestürzt werden. The 20th century saw a confrontation between two opposing systems, capitalism and socialism. The example of the Soviet Union that proclaimed equality of all nations and all classes of society posed a threat to capitalism. The United States and uh, Great Britain were equally suspicious of the Soviet Union. It, it was communism, it was seen as a direct threat to the uh, democratic capitalist systems in the West. And so they were as uh, uneasy you know, with the Soviet Union as they were with uh, Germany. 1938, the Austrian Anschluss, the partition of Czechoslovakia by Germany, Poland and Hungary, the beginning of World War II. Having realized the danger in March 1939, the Soviet Union proposed an anti-fascist alliance to Western countries. The Soviets are trying to rally the West make a stand with them against fascism. They opposed Munich. They opposed allowing Hitler into Czechoslovakia. But nobody would do that. So it wasn't just in 1939 when the Soviets proposed an alliance with Britain and France against Hitler. It had been actually throughout the, the late last half of the 1930s that the Soviets were pushing for that. Had that happened, we could have stopped Hitler. We could have prevented the Holocaust. We could have prevented World War II because Hitler was weak and knew he was weak and he was bluffing and assuming that the West was not going to stand up to him. That the West was hoping, and many elements in the West were hoping, that he was just going to go east. And so in the 30s, the Soviets are the ones who are most strongly opposed to the Nazis. The Moscow negotiations between the USSR, UK and France had stalled because at the same time, London hosted secret Anglo-German negotiations. In exchange for the British Empire's integrity, the British green a German march to the east. And despite the absence of a formal agreement, Hitler was given to understand that he was free to act in the east and shouldn't worry about the West. When we speak of new territory in Europe today, we must principally think of Russia. That colossal empire in the East is ripe for dissolution. Adolf Hitler, Mein Kampf. Hitler makes clear in Mein Kampf in 1925 that the real goal is to take over Ukraine and going to the East against the Soviet Union. That was always Hitler's real goal. And the Europeans understood that in some ways. Poland too was preparing to invade the USSR with Hitler. The dismemberment of Russia lies at the heart of the Polish policy in the East. The main goal is to weaken and defeat Russia from a report by the Polish Army General Staff Intelligence Branch. But Hitler had other plans that didn't involve Poland. Also, no, es war vorgesehen eine Neuaufteilung der Welt, geografische Neuaufteilung, und damit verbunden die Beseitigung der USSR. Das war die Lage, in der sie versetzt waren. Journalist Jan Engelgard 
is curator at the Museum of Polish History in Warsaw. Znajdujemy się przed fotografią, która przedstawia wspólną defiladę wojsk radzieckich i niemieckich we wrześniu 1939 roku po pakcie Ribbentrop-Mołotow. To jest ważna fotografia, bo przedstawia ona wydarzenia, które w polskiej pamięci historycznej odgrywa bardzo dużą rolę. Nie ma tutaj miejsca na fałszowanie historii, bo takie fakty istniały. But there were other facts too, about which the West prefers to keep silent. The Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact was only signed after all leading European powers had made deals with Hitler. 1933. Germany, France, UK and Italy signed the Four Power Pact. 1934. Poland and Germany signed a non-aggression declaration. 1935, the UK and Germany sign a naval agreement. 1938, the UK, France and Italy agree to the partition of Czechoslovakia between Germany, Poland and Hungary. 1939, Latvia and Estonia sign non-aggression pacts with Germany. Es war klar, dass ein, ein Angriff von Deutschland drohte. Und äh, wenn die Sowjetunion nicht bestimmte Maßnahmen ergriffen hätte zu diesem Zeitpunkt, dann wäre das einfach fahrlässig gewesen, auch dem eigenen Volk gegenüber, wenn ein aggressiver Gegner an den Grenzen steht und dort ganze Armeen auffährt. Here's what well-known American author Dean Henderson yes. thinks of past events. Poland and Hungary invaded Czechoslovakia before Hitler invaded Poland because Poland and Hungary were working already uh, with the Nazis and France and England basically threw Czechoslovakia under the bus. And uh, they don't really want us to remember that part, you see, but they just abandoned them. Um, and again, if it hadn't been for Stalin coming on the Eastern Front, uh, they would abandon a lot more people in Eastern Europe as well. However, on September the 19th, 2019, the European Parliament adopted a resolution stating that it was Germany and the USSR that paved the way for World War II. Warum die EU-Kommission das macht? Ich denke, da sind auch wieder Interessengruppen gerade aus dem Baltikum und auch aus Polen, ähm, die ganz stark dort Lobbyismus betreiben, aber es sind extreme nationalistische Kräfte. But not everyone in the EU agrees with the official line. Porównywanie Stalina do Hitlera i zrównywanie radzieckiego komunizmu, radzieckiego socjalizmu z niemieckim nazizmem jest to szczególna podłość historyczna z tego typu stwierdzenie i nie powinno być zgody na tego typu działania. Die Versuche, die Sowjetunion als einen der Verursacher des Zweiten Weltkrieges darzustellen, ist aus, nicht nur aus meiner Sicht, sondern ich denke auch aus historischer Sicht kompletter Unsinn. United Europe seems keen to erase from history a very unflattering fact. Which is that officially, war was declared on the Soviet Union by Nazi Germany along with Italy, Vichy France, the governments of Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, and Finland. Unofficially, the war against the USSR involved Norwegians, Danish, and Swiss. As part of the Viking and Nordland SS divisions, the Dutch Nederland SS, Belgian SS volunteers, the Flanders Legion, the Spanish Blue Division, the Albanian Skanderberg SS, as well as notoriously vicious SS officers from Lithuania, Estonia, and Ukraine. Almost all of Europe, led by Nazi Germany, took part in the slaughter of Soviet nationals. First and foremost, Slavic people. Denn Hitler wurde an die Macht gebracht. Und zwar weil Hitler derjenige war, der 
die aggressivste Politik versprach, mit der man die Welt neu aufteilen konnte. The Second Front, so lauded in the West, was formed a mere 11 months before Victory Day. When it became clear that the Red Army could manage on its own. Throughout most of the war, the Americans and the British were confronting 10 German divisions between us, while the Soviets were confronting more than 200 German divisions by themselves. On the Soviet and German front, the German troops aber umso größeren. Widerstand. Der sowjetische Regierungschef schrieb deshalb an Roosevelt wieder und das Ergebnis ist, dass die Deutschen an der Westfront in der betreffenden Minute den Krieg gegen England und Amerika tatsächlich äh, beendeten. Zugleich führten die Deutschen aber den Krieg gegen Russland, den Verbündeten Englands und der USA, äh, weiter. Aber auch vom politischen Gesichtspunkt ist es ein Verrat. Vom moralischen Gesichtspunkt her gar nicht zu sprechen. And in March 1945, Britain and the US enter into secret negotiations with Germany to negotiate the surrender of German forces in northern Italy. Die Sowjetunion hat das mitbekommen, natürlich, hat Antrag gestellt, teilzunehmen. Es wurde aber abgelehnt. Die Westmächte verletzten damit noch vor Ende des Krieges ihre Verpflichtungen gegenüber der Sowjetunion als Alliierte. Ich bin mit der Sowjetunion sozusagen alliiert und verhandle gleichzeitig mit dem Feind. In his letter to President Roosevelt, Stalin openly accuses the Allies of negotiating a separate peace with Germany. Already on his deathbed, Roosevelt writes back saying, you have been misinformed. Stalin responds with, our informants are humble and honest people. Churchill's position is more aggressive. He approaches the US with his plans for Operation Unthinkable, an alliance of Anglo-Saxons and Nazis, and the massive bombing of Soviet cities. The war was not yet to end. Potsdam noch lange nicht im Sicht. Aber Churchill hat schon den Auftrag erteilt, einen neuen Kriegsplan. Es war schlicht und einfach ein Angriff auf die Sowjetunion geplant. Und man wollte dabei 100.000 gerade besiegte Soldaten der deutschen Wehrmacht. Das zu charakterisieren, dürfte jedem Denkenden eigentlich überlassen bleiben. Es ist einfach unehrlich. I get up every morning and pray that Stalin is alive and well. Only Stalin can save the world. Winston Churchill. Once the world was saved, Churchill changed his mind. Any attempt by the Soviets to compete against the Anglo-Saxons had to be quashed forever. The USSR has to be eliminated immediately. General George S. Patton, commander of the U.S. Third Army, demands that the troops do not stop at the Elbe, but move on towards Stalingrad. On June 29, 1945, Stalin, who already knows about the operation, orders Marshal Zhukov to move troops to combat positions in the West. It is now clear to the Allies that a surprise attack is no longer possible. Wenn Churchill bekanntlich in die deutschen Kriegsgefangenen sozusagen mobilisiert hat gegen 
Deutschland erneut die Waffen sozusagen gegen die Sowjetunion damals zu richten, in Norddeutschland. Und er, er zur Potsdamer Konferenz kommt, Stalin fragt, ja, was ist denn das? Ist da was da? Was macht ihr da? Und Churchill sagt, ja, da bin ich nicht informiert. Da muss ich mich informieren. Dieses Doppelspiel eigentlich der Westmächte. That's enough. We're no longer interested in a union with the Russians, so we don't have to abide by the agreements with them. We need to make the Yalta records non-existent. Harry Truman. But the Allies need the Red Army in the Far East, where the one and a half million strong Kwantung Army is waiting. The US and Britain had a hard time retaking several islands from Japan and would welcome some help. What the Japanese dreaded the most was the idea that the Soviets might come into the Pacific War. Truman understood this. Stalin assures him that the Russians are coming in on schedule. Truman writes in his diary, says Stalin will be in the Jap War by August 15th. Finny Japs when that occurs. The invincible Kwantung army was able to hold out for just 20 days. The Red Army's outstanding Manchurian operation ended in complete victory. Even though there were no military reasons for it, Hiroshima and Nagasaki were bombed. The bomb was not actually dropped on Japan. It was dropped on the Soviet Union as a warning of what was going to happen to the Soviets if they interfered with America's post-war plan. On November the 3rd, 1945, just a month after the war ended, the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff receive report number 329. Select 20 targets to attack in the Soviet Union with nuclear bombs. The time was right, as the USSR was devastated by war. The United States lost about 400,000 people, and the Brits lost less than the Americans did, and the Soviets suffered 27 million deaths. Twenty-seven million is an incredible number. When John Kennedy gave his American University commencement address in 1963, he said that what the Soviets suffered in World War II was the equivalent of the entire United States east of Chicago having been destroyed. Initially, the plan to attack the USSR was codenamed Trojan. Over time, it evolved into Pincher, Bushwhacker, Crankshaft, Half Moon, Cogwheel, Off Tackle, and Charioteer. December the 19th, 1949, saw the adoption of the best known plan to wipe out the Soviets. Operation Dropshot. Date of attack, January the 1st, 1957. The plan outlined the complete annihilation of the USSR under the democratic guise of liberating the nations from communism. But those very nations would be wiped out along with communism. The first phase of Operation Dropshot envisaged dropping 300 nuclear and 250,000 tons of conventional bombs on the Soviet Union. 100 Soviet cities were pre-selected as targets. The second phase. The USSR is attacked by 250 NATO divisions. Soviet ports are taken over by NATO naval forces. The third phase. Annihilating the USSR. Wiping it off the world map. To that end, all known weapon types are to be deployed. Nuclear, chemical, radiological, and biological, as well as small arms. The final phase. Breaking the USSR into four zones and posting NATO troops on its territory. More than 80 million people. 
the majority of the huge country's population would have died in the intense bombing and subsequent fighting. We have a series of these kinds of war plans. When Kennedy is briefed on them in the early 1960s, he was horrified. You know, and he said, we call ourselves a human race. But these plans continue for preemptive attacks against the Soviet Union. This was, in essence, an updated version of the Nazi general plan, Ost, that envisaged eliminating millions of Slavic people. And, as in World War II, when much of Europe stood united against the USSR, the US planned to muster all NATO nations under the aegis of Operation Dropshot. In 1949, though, the Soviets acquired their own nuclear weapons. So any plan to annihilate the USSR had to be postponed indefinitely. But the idea remained the same. The United States had to be seen as the only major player in the international arena. Anyone who thought otherwise had to be wiped from the Earth. The Soviet Union itself is no more. This is a victory for democracy and freedom. These events clearly serve our national interest. George Bush. Zusammenbruch der Sowjetunion eigentlich wie ein wie eine Art Filetstück auf dem silbernen Tablett lag und man musste sich nur noch bedienen an diesem Land und an seinen Ressourcen. Wenn man sich anschaut, was in den 90ern in Russland passiert ist, also der komplette Plünderung dieses Landes. The United States became the indispensable country uh, with the exceptional people whose obligation uh, was to lay down uh, the path for all other countries. And so it became a, uh, a new, a renewed justification uh, for um, American aggression in the world. It was the uh, justification uh, for the 20 years of war in the 21st century in the Middle East for the attacks on, uh, on seven countries. Und das, was wir tun in Afghanistan, ist neokolonial. Das, was wir tun in Syrien, ist neokolonial. Unsere gesamte Haltung gegenüber dem Nahen Osten, ob das der Iran ist oder der, der Irak ist, ist neokolonial. Der Irakkrieg, der erste und der zweite Irakkrieg, waren keine Befreiungskriege. Es ging nicht darum, das arme Kuwait vor dem, vor dem bösen Irak zu bewahren. Es ging darum, Saddam Hussein zu stürzen, der sich abgewandt hatte vom Westen und der seine Erdölreserven äh, im Irak gerne nicht nur gegen Dollar verkauft hätte. Libyen, Gaddafi ist genau das Gleiche gewesen, wozu auch der arabische Frühling zählte in Ägypten, Tunesien, Syrien. Diese gesamte Region zu destabilisieren, weil eine destabilisierte Region sich von den Mächten, die da außen drumherum sind, besser kontrollieren lässt. The reason uh, US hegemony is so dangerous is it, it uh, denies the sovereignty of other countries. March 24th, 1999. The day Yugoslavia was annihilated and it was covered on live TV. <laughs> Lawyer Sergej Alexic and General Bozidar Djelic witnessed the events and still remember those terrible days. Mi smo eto prvi put oset bili među prvim zemljama koje su osetile tu pod znacima navodima navoda američku demokratiju. 
Mi smo doživili jednu tragediju koja je jedna mala zemlja od jednog tako moćnog saveza koji je jednostavno ignorisao sve međunarodne propise i napao bez odobrenja Ujedinih nacija samovoljno jednu malu Srbiju i Crnu Goru i izazvao nam veliku katastrofu. Operation Allied Force has been called a genocide with Slobodan Milosevic's tyrannical regime the justification. But many say the real reason was Yugoslavia's economic independence and refusal to join NATO. Lawyer Goran Petronjevic spent years researching documents that he says corroborate NATO crimes committed in his homeland. Njihov plan je bio da se Balkan stavi pod kontrolu još 90. godina. I dan danas je njihova strategija težnja da dođu do ruskih granica i okruživanje Rusije zarad prirodnih bogatstava koje Rusija ima. With the Warsaw Treaty Organization gone, the world had become unipolar. Für die ganze Existenz des Warschauer Vertrages gab es nicht einen, sozusagen keinen Schuss in Europa, keinen Krieg. Der Warschauer Vertrag ist verschwunden, wurde aufgelöst und schon gab es Krieg auf dem Balkan. Veliku ekonomsku štetu, 120 milijardi, preko 3000 ljudi je poginulo, 80 mora dece i velika šteta. In autumn 2000, the district court in Belgrade hears a case against those who gave orders for Yugoslavia to be bombed. Bio sam predsjednik veća Vrhovnog suda u Beogradu koji je donao presudu protiv Clintona, Blaira, Solane i ostalih. Among the others who were sentenced to 20 years in prison were the French president Jacques Chirac, the German chancellor Gerhard Schroeder, the US Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, the NATO Secretary General Javier Solana, the Supreme Allied Commander in Europe Wesley Clark, and NATO ministers of foreign affairs and defense. Jedno od krivičnih dela koje je stavljeno na teret sa liderima NATO-a je bilo i upotreba zabranjenih borbenih sredstava, a to su sredstva koja su kao što su kasetne bombe i uranomska municija. Veliki broj ljudi je kao posljedica oboljevanja, malinih oboljenja koje je dobio od dejstva osiromašenog uranjuma. Ja sam se deset godina posle bombardovanja praktično razboleo i doktori su utvrdili da tumori koje sam operisao su nastali kao posljedica osiromašenog uranjuma. Ja sam imao priliku da u Briselu postavim pitanje Vesliju Clarku. Komandantu NATO-a. Ja sam ga nazvao planetarnim zločincem, jer on to i jest. I pitao sam kako ste mogli da napadnete moju zemlju, koja nije ugrožavala ničiju bezbednost. A niste imali saglasnost Ujedinjenih nacija i Savjeta bezbednosti. I on kaže, da, tačno je. Mi nismo imali saglasnost Savjeta bezbednosti, ali smo postigli koncenzus u okviru NATO pakta. To je tako jedan odgovor od čoveka koji je vodeo najveću svetsku silu u napadu na hiljadu puta slabiju državu koja nije ugrožavala ni jednu članicu NATO pakta, koja nije ugrožavala svetski mir, koja je pokušavala da reši svoje unutrašnje probleme na svojoj teritoriji. Can the bombing of Yugoslavia be considered a war crime? Answer most emphatically yes. It was not approved by the United Nations, period. It was a NATO operation. It was an illegal NATO operation. They killed over 2,000 innocent civilians and frankly innocent soldiers who hadn't declared war on anybody.
It was also a vicarious war. It was intended to show Russia, the new Russia, that it couldn't go too far. The Soviet Union did not have time to destroy the atom bomb. That scenario, his destruction or destruction, would have happened much earlier than what happened in our Yugoslavian scenario, or destruction of Yugoslavia. I to kada se kaže da posjedovanje atomskog oružja jednovremeno znači i zaštitu suvereniteta jedne zemlje, to je tačno tako. After the collapse of the Warsaw Treaty Organization, NATO expanded east, despite having promised not to. But they did. NATO said, ha! It's ours. We move east. International law exists as long as it serves American interests. If it doesn't, it doesn't exist. Uh, so, truthfully, there's no such thing as international law. Since the Soviet Union's collapse, the USA has been surrounding new Russia with a belt of hostile nations. Farbrevolutionen sind in Mode gekommen, nachdem Staaten erkannt haben, dass es unter Umständen sinnvoller, nachhaltiger und auch preiswerter ist, wenn sie keine eigenen Truppen in irgendwelche Länder schicken. The color revolutions is a uh, strategy to overthrow these regimes, install puppets, and that are there, uh, from that point forward, are very susceptible to influence. Kyrgyzstan, uh, Georgia, and Ukraine, these countries were targeted by uh, the, the George H. W. Bush, uh, or George uh, W. Bush, the senior vice president of Ronald Reagan, and bribed uh, with hundreds of millions of dollars and these monies were given to countries in exchange for their acquiescence and their submission to American uh, military and economic and uh, political objectives. A ring of NATO military bases is being formed around Russia. The US and NATO have over 600 military bases worldwide. Russia has just 18. But the West still claims that Russia has aggressive intent. By turning the Russians, the Soviets, into this dangerous boogeyman that wants to take over the world, that was a conscious strategy to create this image of the Soviets as out for world conquest, which was not the case then or now. NATO should have died, but they wanted to give it meaning. It is about interests created by, by NATO, NATO's business machine. Because you must remember, if NATO were disbanded, shareholders in the United States and elsewhere in large uh, arms companies would lose millions and millions. They'd only have one yacht instead of two yachts each. Dear, oh dear, wouldn't that be terrible? There's a simple method to put it right with the rest of the world. We'll say we were forced to seize the territory, bring order, and maintain security. Adolf Hitler. Bring order, security, and democracy. The reasons used to justify modern wars waged by NATO and led by the US. Die NATO is ein Instrument von vielen, die dazu benutzt werden, um die Kontrolle, die militärische, wirtschaftliche, politische Kontrolle über bestimmte Regionen auf dem Globus zu bekommen. Undesirable countries and undesirable leaders become the face of the enemy. Und Kriege kann man nur führen, wenn man seinem eigenen Volk einen Feind präsentiert. Das heißt, Russland wird wieder zum Feind gemacht. Die Ablehnung des russischen Impfstoffs, die Sanktionen gegen Russland aufgrund der angeblichen Annexion der Krim und des Engagements im Donbass, 
die Politik im, äh, im Bereich Nawalny oder Skripal, ja, Novichok und all diese Dinge sind nur dafür da, um ein Feindbild aufzubauen und aufrechtzuerhalten. Um nichts anderes geht's. Das ist alles Bestandteil von meiner Ansicht nach sogar Kriegsvorbereitung. Dass im Falle einer Konfrontation der Westen genau weiß, wer sein Feind ist. Mark Bartolmei is one of the few journalists who has spoken the truth about events in Ukraine. His documentary, Ukrainian Agony, caused a stir in the Western world. Also die, die Situation in der Ukraine findet de facto in der Berichterstattung ja überhaupt nicht statt im Moment. Die Situation ist so, dass es eine deutliche Faschisierung gibt in der, in der Ukraine. sich in eine Richtung, die Europa eigentlich nicht wahrnehmen möchte. In der Europa aber auch klar Mitschuld ist, auch die USA Mitschuld sind, weil sie dieses Land in diesen Zustand letztendlich mit hinein manövriert haben. An investigation against Mark was launched after the film was released. What the journalist had reported was not in line with the West's official stance. Es gab Ermittlungsverfahren auch gegen mich. Der deutsche Inlandsgeheimdienst hat sich dann mit mir beschäftigt. Das ist der Verfassungsschutz. Ich hatte also nicht mehr die Möglichkeit, wie ich es vorher getan habe, hier für Zeitungen oder, oder auch Sender äh, zu arbeiten. Ich äh, wurde also dann als russischer Propagandist, der dann auf der Payroll, also auf der Gehaltsliste des Kremls stand, äh, hier dargestellt. Insofern hat dieser, dieser Film schon mein Leben ziemlich stark verändert. Aber ich bereue ihn immer noch nicht. Mark used his film to tell ordinary people the truth as he saw it. It wasn't for the authorities. You can't bring truth to those who don't want it. Clearly, whether or not the Bandera people are reviving Nazism is of no concern whatsoever to the United States or NATO. Uh, anything that makes the Ukrainians uh, willing to cause trouble with Russia is welcomed. The United States approves of is the trouble that the Ukraine is apparently prepared uh, to present uh, Russia. American politicians don't see eye to eye on many issues, but there is something on which they always agree. America is exceptional. To wreck our economy again. But what does that mean? Here's how American journalist and Pulitzer Prize winner, Eric Lichtblau explains it. Americans, Barack Obama and others, have had a concept of American exceptionalism, which I think means uh, living to a higher moral ideal based on democracy and freedom and human rights. And that's just simply untrue. So the exceptionalism in one regard uh, claims to be a license to do anything uh, without uh, fear of, of repercussions. It's also an indicator to the world that the exceptionalism that America uses in its international war planning is one of the greatest threats to the, to the uh, populations of different nations.
Methods of warfare are becoming increasingly sophisticated. New tactics have arrived to replace the colonial conquests of the past. Na dzień dzisiejszy robi się to metodami bardziej gospodarczymi, bardziej ekonomicznymi. Nie są burzone domy, nie są burzone zakłady, mosty. Natomiast burzone jest społeczeństwo. Wielu Polaków wyjechało z Polski, młodych ludzi. I ten proces niszczenia społeczeństwa słowiańskiego w dalszym ciągu jest kontynuowany. EU als Europäische Union ist gar nicht so ein friedliches Konstrukt, wie man immer denkt, sondern es ist ein Konstrukt, das auf wirtschaftlicher, fiskalischer Kontrolle und damit auch politischer Kontrolle aufgebaut ist. For example, Germany and France, to a lesser extent, are exploiting the weaker members of the European Union, Greece and Croatia, you know, anywhere where Germany can make big business. That is a form of exploitation. Can the Greek economy be considered ruined by the European Union? Yes, it was ruined by the European Union. It's surrealistic. When you look now at how many Greeks have left the country, it's an embarrassment. How many young people have left the country, it's an embarrassment. Resources are being depleted. But yet another attempt at dividing the world has become a major item on the modern agenda. Soviet Russia is a pie that needs to be smartly divided and eaten. Adolf Hitler. Russia is still a huge pie, and it's at the forefront of Western thoughts. Der Kapitalismus muss Märkte kontrollieren, muss Ressourcen kontrollieren. Wenn er das nicht kann, um dann Zugriff auf unabhängige, souveräne Regionen, Staaten zu bekommen, muss man zu härteren Mitteln greifen, die bis hin zum Krieg gehen. We now have a situation where the United States has uh, uh, given to uh, Ukraine a military guarantee against Russian intervention in the event Ukraine renews its invasion of Donbass. So uh, clearly, yes, we're, he we're headed in the direction of war. If the Ukrainians uh, take this guarantee seriously, as the Poles took the British guarantee in 1939, then surely a, a war could break out at any time. Also, ich glaube, kein Volk auf dieser Welt will Krieg. Und die Gefahr geht halt immer davon aus, wenn Politik und Medien beginnen, extreme Propaganda zu betreiben. Regular Americans do not want to fight. Regular Americans are fed up with the war machine. War is business, and business is good. And that is the reality of what we're facing, which is fascism. History repeats itself. Just like in 1941, when Hitler and his European accomplices massed their army on the Soviet border, the NATO alliance, led by the United States, is gathering near Russia's border. History teaches us that man learns nothing from history. Hegel.